Why after three years did we decide to take a break? Can a break even help a relationship or is it just a sign of impending doom? We're very excited to dive into those questions and more on this very first episode of Borderline Inappropriate with Merle and Aria. Hello, welcome. Hello, hello. This is very exciting. This First is... episode of the podcast. My lip hurts because I bit my lip and now I have a canker sore on the inside of my tongue. Or she was kissing someone. And no, they're has, different. Has, they're and, different. And has contracted it's different. something. It's different than cold sores. Canker sores are not from a virus. You can be genetically predispositioned to have canker sores. And they can come from a whole range of things. And that's what our podcast is about. <laughs> it's about canker sores. My name is Aria. My name is Merle. And some of you may know us because our relationship was put on blast when we both worked at BuzzFeed, which is where we met. And there was a whole documentary that he made about our relationships. <laughs> yes. People, strangers following us just because they liked watching us date, wanted us to date, and then we ended up dating in real life. So, And four years later, here we are. Yeah. We're launching a podcast. Yeah. You know, some might say uh, much later than we should have. I was just going to say, <laughs> we probably should have done this when people still cared. <laughs> probably a lot of people thought we weren't together anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when I Google myself, the top search is, are Merlin Aria still together? And yes, I do Google myself. You know, I, I am. Uh, I, well, it's not that embarrassing. It's, I have not you know, Googled myself. You have not Googled yourself? I have, but not in a, a year or two. I don't do it that often. I probably Google myself. I mean, it's fine if you do. I'd say probably like a couple of times a year just because I want to see what the Internet has on me because I've done <laughs> and <laughs> a guilty conscious. <laughs> I want to make sure that what's on the Internet is reflective of who I am and what I want to be and what I get I'm that. doing. Yes. But here we are. And uh, now we have this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, we've moved in together after basically three and a half years of dating, yeah. uh, which for most people would say is a very significant amount of time before moving in together. Tell them what the podcast is about, Merle. Okay, so the podcast is about taboo topics because both of us have explored in our work, both at BuzzFeed and for ourselves, topics that people might be hesitant to talk about or ask about. We basically want to provide a space for taboo conversations and topics that we find interesting and intriguing and you know if you don't have someone you can ask about hopefully we can shed some light on these topics we just want to cover topics that may be uncomfortable to normally discuss we want to provide a safe space where we can all feel comfortable exploring these topics without feeling judged Yes, exactly. Without the sense of discomfort that may come with some of these topics like today's one, which is a nice little ease into the takeoff for this podcast, which is uh, the topic of taking a break in a relationship, which is something we did. Yes. You know, very recently, which uh, may come as a surprise to those who did follow us or had been following us for uh, a good chunk of time. Yeah. You know, and I think it's an important conversation to have as well, because I think breaks in general have very negative connotation to them. Or at least for me, they did. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it's a conversation worth having. And I want to follow this up by saying that not every episode will be within the realm of relationships. It's just something that obviously we can speak to a little bit more, having been in one for a while. And I think there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of taboo topics in the relationship space that we have experienced. But it's not a relationship podcast. Yes, I want to make that very, very clear. And we're not experts. Nor are we experts. but we, In anything, really. <laughs> we're all throwing out all the disclaimers, which is very important <laughs> to have. Essentially, this is not a relationship podcast. This is a podcast about two people in a relationship sharing uh, uncomfortable things. And this podcast is available both in video and audio format if you want to either just hear our voice on your morning drive, your morning run, or if you want to watch us, you know, uh, while your boss, you know, is in the other room and you just want to have a little, little sneaky peek during the day, you get to see our beautiful faces. I used to watch shows while I was working. At BuzzFeed? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, everyone, everyone did that. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, At my you know. desk. What would you watch? The Vampire Diaries or Twin Peaks. Wow. <laughs> I, that I did not know. Yeah. Um, I would have it on my monitor and then I would have it covered so I could just listen to it. What excites me about this podcast is that in the early stages of our relationship, our courtship, if you will, a lot of it was us at the office after hours chatting late into the night, you know, supposedly doing work, but we just get ramen and we chat, we talk about all kinds of uh, strange, uncomfortable uh, things that you shouldn't be talking about with your coworker, <laughs> lest, you know, HR here, but uh, that we did. And in many ways, hopefully we can uh, give you guys a little that taste. That sounds of, so fucked up. What were we talking about? I mean, the, the worst things we would talk about were probably just like murder. 
Oh, it, we yeah. Both we liked. had a running joke that Arya used to dump people's bodies off of the Santa Monica Pier, <laughs> yeah. which has not been disproved <laughs> to this day. That we just true. let it go one day. What? How did they even begin? What I was, was I just talking about like the men you would go on dates with? I'd say, oh, he's going to wind up. No, you would just say. <laughs> hey, I was just thinking that. You would just say like. You know, sometimes I like to go on those drives out in Santa Monica. I like to just drive out to the pier. And I was like, why would you do that? Unless you're like, and you're like, just, to, you know, it's a good place to dispose of bodies. Which should have been a red flag, honestly. <laughs> but she I liked it. It, it got, it got it was funny. She finds it funny. Uh, again, HR, probably not. We have met at BuzzFeed. I have been there for about four years. And I had just moved from the New York office to the LA office. And Aria had been there for two years. By that point, I'd been there about three, three years at, uh, in L.A. Okay. And I was new on the Goodful team, their wellness brand, came in. Aria was doing, like, hard-hitting Literally hard-hitting. I was doing an MMA documentary at the time where I was training for an MMA fight. Yeah, so I happened to meet him when he was in his peak physical shape. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a peak I have not... <laughs> it definitely was a peak because <laughs> since then, uh, the abs are gone. I'm That's sorry fine, to say. Though. It doesn't matter. Either way, it was uh, good timing, I guess, to meet you because... Mm -hmm. You were probably feeling really good, although oh, you yeah. were you were measuring every meal. But regardless, <laughs> yeah, we, that was not great. Um, we would just talk. I, I sat across from Aria, and I think we would just talk during work hours. So people that sat around us, like our boss Jess or our friend Rachel, were would be annoyed by us because we would be talking all day. So then we started staying late, ordering ramen from all different ramen places to experiment around to see which was the best one. And that's what we started doing after hours. And I can remember my friend. Rachel saying like, wow, you guys are staying late every night. Mm -hmm. And then she'd be like, but you're not interested in dating? She wasn't. I was. Because I wanted to be single. Absolutely. Yeah. Merle had just uh, gotten out of a well, just. Yeah, so like five, you were like five months out of a yeah, long term relationship. Four year relationship. Uh, and so she wanted to wait a, a fair year. chunk of time. You wanted to wait a At year? least. Yeah. And I had a big trip to Australia with my cousin where I was supposed to be an absolute slut the whole time. Hey, you know what? And I, and I, <laughs> I would have wanted to do that too. Had yeah. I had, uh, Spoiler alert: I didn't. I did go, but I wasn't <laughs> single. I regret that. <laughs> and you know what? And that's and that's. I regret that to this day. Yeah, and you know what? And I don't uh, begrudge her feeling that way. Because in, in a way, I think I would too. And in a way, I think that maybe parlays into why we decided to go on a break. Not necessarily to be sluts. <laughs> we'll get to that. You yeah. know. But uh, you know, little contributing factors like that. I think. Uh, led to the eventual break. I was looking forward to going to Australia to sleep with everyone and anyone mm -hmm. I could that was Australian, preferably. That's fair, you know. But that didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, and I do want to I did go it, to Australia. I did want to make it clear, though, that I did say to her, I said, we don't have to be official until you're ready. So you... Yeah, you did. You, you, I told her, you be the one to broach the subject of being in an official relationship, being exclusive. Uh, and she was the one that did it. On October 31st, after Devin Lytle's uh, Halloween party in her car. Yeah, because you had been so nice and you were so sick and you stayed at the party anyway. And I thought, wow, this guy is so dedicated to spending time with me. I remember saying, you're already my boyfriend or something like that. It was very, very sweet. Well, then you feel like when you're falling with, for someone that you don't want to actually hook up with anybody else. Yeah. That's you know, fair. so that was why I was like, why am I going to go to Australia when I'm in the middle of like this this thing with Arya, which is obviously headed somewhere. Like it just didn't seem appealing anymore. Yeah. And I felt guilty. I think I felt guilty that I'd taken away that experience from you for you, uh, of going to Australia and being a, a slut. I did uh, go to Australia though. You did. And that was, you still had a great time there. I did. Uh, just not, you know, uh, a sexual rampage. No, if you will. sadly. Yeah. yeah. But there's always the future. Yeah. There's always the future. There's always the future. But, but that's, that's for, that's, that's for another, another episode. episode. I mean, like, we won't go into the nitty gritty of how, like, you know, the, the, the whole courtship. That's either in its own episode or you can honestly just watch the video on YouTube. Yeah. We'll uh, although them. we don't get any money off of that. BuzzFeed does. Yeah. So. Yeah. Long story short, we've been together for a while, though. So let's dive into the topic of breaks in a relationship. A break, by my definition, there's a whole iconic fight about this whole concept on Friends, obviously, with Ross and Rachel. Which I'm sure many of you are familiar Rachel, with. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> We were on a break, that whole thing. I think you should make it very clear to the other person that you both understand what a break is, which mm -hmm. in our case was an, a period of time where we weren't speaking or seeing yes. each other. 
Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, I feel like obviously most of you watching this and li or listening uh, are familiar with what a break is. But I think there are, like you said, there are many different ways a break can take shape in healthy and unhealthy ways. Mm -hmm. I think we approached ours in a very healthy manner. Before we talk about our own situation or our own personal experience with taking a break, we should probably talk about what society's view on breaks is. And it's quite, yeah, you're right. It's quite a, it's a polarizing kind of situation. Yeah, it's I definitely think taboo. That's the first word that comes it's, to mind. It's taboo in the sense that, yeah, I think even in our research, when we were like just doing research for this episode, looking up, you know, studies on breaks and whatnot, you know, I would, I even like, obviously there were some unreliable sources that I went into just to see what the temperature was. You know, I was going on like Reddit and Quora, you know, like those, those wiki how type answers, which, you know, take those with a very big grain of salt. However, very polarizing. There are many people that say, you know, if you're taking a break, you may as well just break up. Mm. Like there's like, there's like, what's the point? There is validity to that. You know, there are people that say, you know, a break is just kind of a cheap way of easing into a, a breakup while trying not to hurt the other person's feelings. However, on the flip side, there are also a lot of, you know, resources and studies uh, and people, especially, especially like the mental health field and relationship there therapist. Are. Well, there are, there are people have spoken out and said that, you know, they feel like if a, if, a break is handled well in a healthy manner. Things are, you know, planned out accordingly, rules set, etc. It can be healthy for um, the couple. But again, going back to the idea of it being taboo, I do think it is a taboo topic because, I mean, I'll even speak for myself. Like the, the notion of a, of a break for me was always very jarring because of the last relationship I was in, which was overall a healthy relationship. But our relationship ended because we went on a break that just became a breakup. Technically, the break became a breakup without us officially ending the relationship. So technically, <laughs> I'm still in that relationship uh, with her. Who she She's is now? Married. She is now married. So I'm 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 in a I guess I'm in a polygamous relationship. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not how they work. That's not how it works. <laughs> people have to know they're in the relationship with you. Hey, well, we never officially broke up. So I mean, that's not make you a polygamist. Does not make her husband a polygamist. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> They're a very lovely, beautiful couple, and uh, I'm glad we're still on great terms. So after my last relationship ended, because we had started with a break that became a breakup without it actually becoming a breakup, we just drifted apart and I moved back to LA. I was always like, oh, okay, like, so the notion of a break is essentially a breakup to me. That's how it was in my mind. Mm -hmm. So even when we broached the subject, I was like, oh no, like this is it's essentially a breakup, you know? Like where like I would I was thinking like what's the point of a break? We may as well just break up if that is the case. Like why waste the time? But I've since uh, changed my tune on that because I do see very much the merit of a break. So I think that's why it's taboo. I think you know for some people just even talking about a break in a relationship is like why waste our time? Let's just let's just break up. And I, I don't think, think that's... people talk about it when they do take breaks. I don't think people mention it. What do you mean? To friends or to family? Like I don't think a lot of the time I think people keep it private. That's true. I didn't tell like that many people. That's true. I didn't tell very many people that we were on a break either. That's a good point. It, didn't want it to besmirch anybody's idea of the relationship because I do know there's so many preconceived notions about it. But I do think, I think it's healthy to talk about it so that it sort of gives people permission to consider it and to normalize it a little bit more. I think it's just an opportunity for you to reconnect with yourself without saying, you know, I totally give up on this relationship, but I, I need me time and I need it not to involve any energy or any need to satisfy anything you need right now. I need to just think for myself and focus on myself. No, that's very well said. That was much better said than what I was trying to say. That that's <laughs> You're right. I didn't even think about that. Like there is like a level of shame to yeah. just being like, oh, we're taking a break. And so, like you said, besmirching the, 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 the image people have of the relationship. I mean, if we had, for example, which we would never have had, if we at the time had announced, oh, Merle and I made a, which would that would be a crazy. That's my horror. That would be I such would, a cringy thing to do. You know, my, uh, to put, make PSA. like a, yeah, just hey, uh, like an Instagram story. Hey, just so you know, Merle and I are taking a break. Like, it was complicated though because we both have discords and our discords overlap quite a bit. And I felt a little uncomfortable not mentioning it. But also I didn't, we planned on taking the break longer than we actually did. I just thought that it would be hard to keep, the tr it felt like something I was holding back from people. I told some people, but not many. I told like my mom. And, and I, I mentioned to my family too. Yeah. Um, and a couple of friends, but. I think it's good we're doing this episode though, because I overall think that relationship stuff is so just, it's like the Disney effect of, Everyone believing that relationships are supposed to start 
there's some hard times, but you always come out together and like it's like a little rosy rainbow at the end. When relationships are not like that, sometimes people take breaks, sometimes people open their relationships, sometimes people welcome someone else into their relationship. Like we just have such a vanilla disnified idea of relationships. Oftentimes people will want these things, like they'll want a break or they'll want space from their partner or they'll want to open their relationship or whatever it is. And they'll feel guilty because they've been told by society forever that that's wrong or that something in the relationship isn't enough. So that's why they want that. But in reality, it's like you have all the control over what your relationship looks like. Like you don't owe anybody your relationship and how you choose to be in it and how you choose to be out of it. Like you don't owe anyone anything. Your idea of a relationship is your idea of a relationship. It's just a social construct. So you have complete control over what that is. I have nothing else to add to that. That was absolutely yeah, bang on. As long as your partner agrees. And that I think is why our one went well because we were able to really talk things out and handle it in a very healthy manner. And uh, especially with the help of our wonderful couples therapist Devin. woman, Devin. She's great. She has a very peaceful She's so energy. peaceful. She's I like we, what I wish I could be. Should we send her this podcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Devin. Hi, Devin. Hi, Devin. Thank Devin. you. Thank you for Maybe the, this will be helpful. Oh, Devin's probably not going to want to watch this, but maybe. It could be helpful in future sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Possibly. I yes. don't know. Dude, it's not like homework now. It sounds like we're asking her to watch it. <laughs> well, we need the extra review. Devin, if you're watching this, leave a, leave a review too, please. Yeah, comment. Thumbs please, up. Thumbs yeah, up, comment. Devin, we appreciate it. Uh, well, uh... Uh, but <laughs> as a very quick little detour, couples therapy, highly recommended for oh, anyone, God. even if your relationship is is going smoothly. Why not? I mean, like yeah. we should always be in a mindset where we are always seeking to improve ourselves, both individually and in a relationship. Right. So, uh, you know, people do individual therapy. And if you're in a relationship, I mean, that's like that's essentially another entire person that you're. I mean, I'm just spelling out what a relationship is, but there is another person that you're, you know, trying to work out all these, uh, the issues of communication of trying to understand this person. So a couples therapist, I mean, I don't know. It just, it makes complete sense to, to have one. Should we have done a whole episode on that? We will talk about couples therapy in a future episode, but highly recommend, highly recommend. Also taboo. Also people have a negative connotation of it. Yeah. It's like anytime people admit their relationship's not perfect, the wolves descend, you know? And it's like, uh oh, people like start poking holes in the relationship, whatever it is. Like they assume that because you're going to therapy, couples therapy, that, mm -hmm. you know, there's something you can't handle. And if there's something you can't handle, that's not bad. It's okay. Like that's what couple therapy is for. Couples therapy. I think it says more when people make the active decision and make the monetary decision to go to couples therapy to invest in their relationship. No, absolutely correct. I mean, it's this, it's kind of like how therapy itself, like individual therapy, you know, it has and it continues to, but the stigma is sort of it's it's loosening a little yeah. bit. I still think couples therapy has a much heavier stigma associated with it. Um, but I think it's the same sort of mindset, though. It's like yeah. you're, you know, you're investing in your relationship, you know. Yeah. If you're going to therapy or as couples therapy, if you're comfortable, you should talk about it to people, because anytime someone brings up therapy or couples therapy to me, I'm like, OK, green flag. That person is cool. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, or I accepting. I love the that Karen Gillan, uh, uh, I think it was a tweet or an Instagram post. She shares this screenshot of a Zoom call she had with her newly like betrothed, yeah. like the, her husband who she had recently married. Betrothed? Betrothed. I, my language is out the window It's because right you're now. playing Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah, I am a dick. That's a separate episode. Karen Gillan, she shared this, uh, just like a screenshot of Gotta a Zoom call. Yeah, we'll throw it up. For people watching this podcast on YouTube or wherever we're sharing it video wise, You'll see it on screen. If not, just Google it yourself. But Karen Gillan, she shared this hilarious screenshot of a Zoom call she had with her husband, who she had recently married, and their couple's therapist uh, while she was still in full makeup. So funny. Full nebula makeup. Uh, the dedication. Because she, I guess she had like, she didn't schedule the therapy at the wrong day. But so I just love the transparency and being like, hey, we we're, we just got married, but we're, we're doing couple's therapy. I mean, I like, love that. I mean, that's, that's great. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the sort of normalization that we need to continue seeing, not just for couples therapy, but therapy in general. We'll dive deeper into therapy in a future episode, uh, another taboo topic. Merle and I have a tendency to kind of ramble, go off topic a little bit. No, the, the, I don't. The extended ad-free version of these episodes will be available on Patreon <laughs> if you really want to get chaotic and, uh, you know, just see everything uncut, you know? Kind of fun, kind of raw, you know? <laughs> oh, are you saying it like that? <laughs> Let's talk about our individual stances on this topic. And then also then our, our experience having taken a break. I'm um, for it. 
You're for it? I mean, like, I guess previously prior to the break, oh, I wasn't for no, it. Just the concept. I wasn't either, though. actually. Oh, yeah? Well, no, I mean, I just had never done that before. And I only did taking a break as a form of slowly breaking up with someone. See, I think that's a very common way that it's handled. Because I mean, who wants to ever break up with someone? There's no nice way to break up with someone. There's no, I, I've just never found a way to do it, like, in a way that feels good to me. So I always make people break up with me. <laughs> that sounds terrible. What do you do? You like you just, like, start being a giant, like. <laughs> start being crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just start being crazy. Well, no, I don't try to do anything. I just become miserable, and then nobody wants to be around miserable me. Yeah, I'm like moaning Myrtle, miserable Merle. Yes, but you're beautiful though, so it's nice to be around you. Even not when, you're when unpleasant. I'm not when I'm stomping around. You, you know. should know better than that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, sometimes it's so, sometimes it devolves into toxicity. It's not a sm it's not wise. Yeah. I'm much better. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be afraid. To break up with you. I don't want you to think that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, thank you, I guess. <laughs> like, I would be honest with you. Yes, yes, I, I think so. <laughs> well, I guess that goes into, I would be honest with you too. And I think the reason why our break went so well is because we were very honest and transparent, which comes down to communication, which is, you know, it's kind of oversaid. Communication is key. Communication is so important. But it, it really is. I mean... Prior to this relationship, my communication skills all around, not just in relationships, but in general, were absolutely terrible. I was never able to have serious conversations with, you know, romantic partners, uh, my my family, close friends. And so I'm, I'm very indebted to you for basically forcing me to talk and teaching mm -hmm. me that it's giving me a safe space where I could feel comfortable expressing emotion as well as therapy. Once again, going back to therapy, my individual therapist was very, very helpful in making me feel uh, comfortable talking about these things. Mm -hmm. You've always been very comfortable about it. Um, but that's why early on in our relationship when things, or as we were getting better at communication, you know, when things would come up, issues, we would able, we would be pretty good at talking it out for the most part. Yes, we would. Well, no, you wouldn't actually. Well, <laughs> in the early days, I was it. very bad. Then you would she just would... go in the other room and sit there and stare at the wall like a toy that had lost its batteries. <laughs> You'd sit there. Yeah. Like that. And then yeah. I would come in and say, are you going to talk to me? And you'd yeah. say, I need time. My voice is certainly not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you would say. <laughs> you would uh, say. I would say that. Yeah, I would just shut down. You know, yeah, you I, would shut down. I would shut down. That was, that was just the way I handled like I serious come conversations. In. Anybody yeah. in there? She'd come up to my head and she'd knock at it. Hello? Is there anybody in there? And I'd be like, huh? No, you'd be angry and cranky with me. You'd stomp around. Yeah, I'd stomp around. His big flat feet would stomp around. <laughs> <laughs> but over time, I, I would say I got a lot you better. You have gotten so much better. Yes. and So uh, much better. Honestly, to the betterment of not just our relationship, but Mankind. Again, to mankind, honestly. I know my family, I'm sure, are very great. Well, they're probably grateful for it, but they're also probably not like, this guy could not show no, up. No, no, they're reason. grateful. Trust they're grateful, me, you your think? family is always grateful when you're willing to, sh well, I don't know your family, but I know your family. When you open yourself up, you give them permission to open up. See, you're just, you're throwing down a lot of wise words. You're made for a podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, Except for that I feel so crazy right now. Yeah, she's she's got a frenetic energy right now that it's not maybe not being captured on camera, but she's she's feeling, uh, she's <laughs> She's feel she's got a real flair about her right now. Uh, one might think that she's drunk, but she's actually been sober. I've never been more sober in my life. You haven't had a uh, have, have, you haven't had a tipple haven't, 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 <laughs> I haven't had a drink in two months. Um, but yeah, anyways, they cut me off. Yeah, they did. No, they did it not. <laughs> I made the decision to stop. Not forever, probably not. But so our communication was getting better, and that's probably why we were able to articulate at the point where we needed a break that we oh, needed yeah. one. But why was it that we needed one? Do you want to get into that? What were we saying to Devin? Oh, for me, I felt like I had totally lost myself in the relationship. I was like, I just feel like I'm losing sight of myself and my needs. And I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like disconnected from myself. And she had said, I fully support breaks. I, I've helped other couples facilitate them. And... Her positive response to the idea made us feel more positive about it. Yeah. For sure. We were um, trying to figure out if we wanted to move in together. Aria wanted to move in together. And then I was hesitant because my last experience living with someone, not any sh shade towards them in any way, shape, or form, but ended with us living together for six months while broken up. 
And I was kind of like, I can't do that again. I mean, that is, I, I could see that being, I, I can't even imagine. And you had to share a bed still. Yeah. And not date anyone else. Like we just weren't together. It's like, that's not rough. ideal. Because basically you could, you're lead, you didn't want to break the lease. We didn't want to break the lease. Yeah. And so it was weird because you still felt loyalty to that person. So you didn't see anyone else, but it was just weird. That was kind of the crux of where this conversation began. It's because by the time we had started talking about a break, we were probably already a couple of years into the relationship, two to three years in the relationship. And I figured, you know, the next step would be to move in with your partner. Because, you know, we all saw each other being our long-term partners for life. And so we thought, you know, well, I thought at least, you know, the next natural step would be to move in. And this was also not necessarily just because of our relationship. I was also trying to be pragmatic to a fault because up until us moving in together, I had basically lived with my brother for, you know, uh, my entire time in the U.S., give or take. And we my, love him. We do love Cy. Uh, beautiful, long-haired man. If you're watching this in the video podcast form, I'll throw up a picture of him in his luscious mane. <laughs> uh, he is taken, though, Yeah, uh, people. That said, her. but my brother and I had lived together basically the entire time I lived in the U.S., minus the couple of years I lived with my ex-girlfriend. And, you know, as much as I love my brother and as much as we actually had a good roommate relationship, too, by the, you know, pretty much for the majority of our time together, I was ready to move out and just have my own space and ideally with the partner who I love because I just... And oh. that's okay. And that is okay. It's okay to want to move on and move out. Yeah, it is okay to want to move out. And I think, you know, even for him too, you know, we it, it, it like when it eventually did happen, it was quite sad. It felt like the end of an era, but also the start of an exciting new chapter for both of us, you know, especially because he's also moving in with his partner. Yes. That said, I was just ready to move into the next phase of both my life and then my life with you. And I didn't want to move out of my apartment that I was living with my brother to move into my own apartment, get it all set up, build a home there only to have to eventually move in oh, with yeah, you. You know, like that yeah. just seemed Which counterproductive. I was like, okay, so then I'm basically just going to keep living with my brother then because then, you know, what? what's the point really of just like wasting money moving and everything like that only to then move again right, at a certain right, time right, down right, the road right. with you. Because, you know, we, would, we had hoped to eventually move in together and be together. But then I also understood your concerns because we were having larger concerns about the relationship and I want to also preface this by saying that our break it, it, it was never for a lack of love that's what was kind of what made the whole situation a sad one yeah. it was never like a big blowout no big fight where we were, we were ever doubting that we loved one another it was just more of a question of circumstances time you know like was this the right timing for us which is probably the saddest reason for a couple to break up, you know, like, or to no longer be together. Because in our, in our case, it was like, the reason why we were considering a break or even a breakup potentially was never for like a lack of love. It was because we just weren't sure if this was the right time for us. Merle, like you said, you wanted, you just felt like you were losing your self and sense of identity. And you thought maybe you needed to be out in the world, you know, focusing on yourself, your own personal uh, growth. Mm -hmm. And my even me, I, I, there was a period where I was thinking I might, want to do a lot more traveling and yeah. you know this was during a period where I was doing a bunch of travel for my own YouTube channel at the right. time and everything like that and I thought oh man there's just so much so many places I want to be out in the world we just thought maybe this wasn't the right time for us to be together and so yep. because of that we're like why well I guess more so you were like why would we move in together when we have this fundamental question of should we even be together at this moment not because right. we don't love each other but just because is this yeah even? we had a conversation like maybe if we break up we'll get back together yeah, yeah. And that's why the notion of a break seemed more appealing. Yeah. It all sort of started with the conversation, which had been rolling for a while, about us potentially moving in together. And Merle was always very hesitant about doing so. And her, really, as, and her reasons, as she explained, make complete sense. I mean, I too would be traumatized by the experience of living with someone who you at one point loved, a partner that you break up with, but then you're still forced to share a bed with them for six more months. I mean, that's... Not ideal. Not great. Not great. But the talk about break didn't really solidify until uh, there was an opportunity for me to potentially uh, live and work uh, abroad abroad for like three months. And so we thought, oh, this is it. Because I grew up overseas most of my life. And so travel has been very important to me and discovering different cultures and places. And so the idea of like living abroad um, was very exciting to me. And obviously, if I'm gone for three months, you know, that... We just saw it as a window to potentially consider having a break. And then what happened was that window closed because that opportunity <laughs> went out the window. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but then, then we're awkwardly like, okay, well, now what do we do? Because we already planned to do this. Yeah. So we had to do it with us both living in L.A. The plans for me to go abroad fell through because of a project I had to do locally here in L.A. And then we thought, well, 
you know, we are facing kind of like these larger questions about the relationship in general, right? About like, if, if we don't feel right moving in together yet, then you know why that, would we why would we and so like maybe we should consider still having this break and just like focusing on ourselves for a little bit of time yeah so we thought we'll still do the, we'll still do the three months but we'll do it while we're both in la which is not which was not ideal i we, think we were gonna do a month that's what happened next yeah after talking about it with Devin, we said okay we'll, we'll change it to a month yeah you know which is still a significant amount of time when we talked about it with Devin, like i said three months she thought was wild with no context so we whittled it down to a month and we had to figure out the rules with Devin about whether or not we were allowed to see other people or what we wanted to do and how if we were allowed to talk to each other. Most importantly that um, if, if we really needed the other person, were we going to be able to reach out to them? And we decided that we wanted no contact. Which she was, uh, she was not entirely for that. She was, I think she was already caught off guard by us wanting to do three months. She was like, oh, that's like, Oh yeah, diving in off the deep end yeah, essentially yeah. because yeah, you're, you're going not not only three months but three months no contact yeah. as well, which in hindsight is kind of yeah, like crazy. kind of crazy to go from a full full on relationship to being like okay, we're going three months, see in three months, see in three months, and you know, and all the you're baggage be different that comes people with that. by then potentially, especially you know, like that's what you would hope from a break essentially, right? If yeah. it's just, especially if you're taking this time to discover yourself and right, whatnot. Right, right. So I think in hindsight, one of the learnings we would take from this is. Either way, you really do have to spend the time talking it out with your partner, establishing the rules, establishing, you know, what the parameters of this break are. Having a couples therapist to help you, if you can, is ideal because they can help kind of just like help just facilitate, curate this this Mediate. break. Which sounds kind of silly, but you know, it's very important. I think you don't think of everything. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, like going back to that infamous Ross and Rachel break, yeah, they had on no, Friends. they had no boundaries. They had no conversation ahead of time it was just i need a break from you and then that's it and then then that's what then what that's happens so is vague. It, that's what's vague and what that's what happens it ends up it. ross ends up sleeping with someone that night yeah and there's all the drama the so were they on a break, they on a break and what was he in the right those are my two questions i think a younger me would say that ross was they I, a younger me would say they were on a break but uh and a part of me still agrees that they were on a break Obviously, I don't think it was ap- I, don't, I don't think it was right at all for him to sleep with someone the night that they went on that break. However, at the same time, you know, in his mind, you know, as he says, he thought he thinks a break is a breakup. And also, he had heard her right when they on the phone, and he, like Mark was at her place, who was already, oh. he was jealous about. So he's assuming that she's sleeping with Mark that night. Right. And so you can sort of like justify his mindset. I wouldn't have done that. Having but- spent through a break, I can't imagine doing that. Doing what? Sleeping with someone that night? Yeah. Well, that's a that would have been crazy thing. That would have been insane to me. Yeah, and that's we can. I mean, we as well get into it now. But one of the things, I mean, to be honest, one of the things I was excited about the break is you know the notion of okay, you've been together with someone for a while. To be transparent, you're like okay, now I'm just gonna go around, you know, embracing my single them to an extent because we had established that you know during the break, you if could. you wanted to hook up with other people, you'd have the freedom to do so. And I remember going into the break like weeks prior to it happening, I was like, oh man. I guess that's probably what I'm going to end up doing, you know. Um, but as soon as the break happened, I could not stop thinking about you in the relationship. And so I didn't hook up with anyone during our break. And to be fair, the break window shortened a lot, which we'll get into. And I went but. to my grandfather's, so I definitely didn't hook up with anybody. <laughs> but I ended up having a really hard time because my grandfather was sick. Mm-hmm. And I was like struggling with that a lot, trying to kind of be helpful for him and just being faced with mortality and whatnot heavy things yeah and so all i wanted to do was talk to you because we talk i mean before living together we would talk every night before we go to bed we text throughout the the day and i was like gosh the only person i want to talk to right now is aria like the only person i want to talk to about this is him and when we were getting closer to the to the start of the break i think just a few days before the break began i think we both equally can correct me if i'm wrong we both equally got cold feet about doing a month yeah, we and, were sad. And so we said, and we I think we talked to Didn't Devin. It hurt that we went to a wedding. We went right to a before, wedding. The day before we were taking the break. Um, and we had a very beautiful time together. My best friend's wedding. Yeah, we had a beautiful time together. And you're meeting all my fr- my best friend's parents. Yeah. And spending time with my mom. Yeah, who I love dearly. It's crazy. Um, it yes. was like the worst thing to do before taking a break. But because of that, we felt very antsy about taking the break. And you would agree, I right? I didn't even want to take it anymore. You didn't want to take it anymore? I don't think so. And you were like, we have to take it. I can't stand being around you. 
<laughs> yeah, those are my words exactly. Uh, but no, I, I, I think I think you did say that, and I, but I think I was like, no, you said you talked about this for too long. We got to try it. I see. Yeah, I said yeah, and it wasn't because I was like, oh and no, he's I, like, I'm, I got to go out in the town. Yeah. I got to go. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've been in DMs right now. I've been ready to <laughs> your face. <laughs> I just figured that we we we'd been like it was necessary. We, we, had, right. we had to at least we've been talking about it for months, if not a year at that point. Right. I was like. If if not now, we just need to do it. You know, we just gotta rip the band aid, and we did it. Uh, and we did it. And but because I got cold feet, we spoke with Devin. We said, let's just do it for <laughs> two, <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> and so yes, our three month break turned into a two week break. However, as silly as that may sound, it really helped. And I, I called after one week. <laughs> she called after a week. We had a therapy session. No, we had a therapy session a week later where we we're supposed. To, that was our first time. At, we got went no contact for a week. Oh yeah, and then we did therapy with Devin. Just that we Devin had said we use therapy as a way to just we, yeah. just to catch up, to, to, just to check in as a check in. So we did the check in, and I think we both we both cried during that <laughs> that call. Yeah, we did cry, and then meanwhile, I'm on the hunt for a new dog. Yes, she had been on the hunt for a dog for a while, and so I'm like emotionally scrolling through dog rescue Instagrams, which is just a horrible idea. Mm-hmm. And so I finally line up these interviews to meet these dogs and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, even though we're technically on the break, I really want Ari to meet the dog because we're going to get back together. Mm -hmm. So we violated our break once again. We didn't even make two weeks. We probably made it, I'd say, a week and a half. Well, Devin did say on that call when we were both quite emotional and during that check in, she was saying how, you know, like you should feel comfortable if you really need to talk to the other person, just reach out to them. Like yeah. the only people that were enforcing or like building these rules around the break were ourselves. These right. were our own rules we had made, like no contact right. and all this kind of stuff. She never said to do that. You know, Devin was saying from the very beginning, she said, you should be easing into this. Like you should not be like going no contact. But we were like, I don't know, we just thought we were. Ready yeah. to go. That, that, I mean, it's the same mindset where I thought, oh, I'm just going to go around town being a slut, you know. But when it comes to it, you know, sometimes the true feelings or the true – that's what it was. That's what's so helpful about the break is that we fe- we discovered what it was that we really wanted out of the relationship and just yeah. in general. And so Merle called me. And I remember when you called me because I was getting a tattoo that day. And I was about to get my tattoo and I got a call from Merle. And I remember feeling both happiness and relief because I remember – I think I had told you. I said to you during that check-in, I said – if you want to call, call me. I'm not going to be the one to call because I felt like you were the one that needed at that point a little bit more clarity than me. So I didn't want to be like pressuring you to speak with me on the phone if that's not what you wanted. So I mm-hmm. said, if you want to call, you can. And she called and that's why I was happy. I was relieved. And we just caught up quickly. And then we had made plans. Then we made plans for that weekend to go check out a dog. And so that's when we uh, ended the break, maybe a couple days early. But it was a good experience. Nonetheless, we had plenty of takeaways. I mean, the biggest takeaway was then like immediately, like maybe a week or so after Mar was like, I'm ready to move in. Yeah. I mean, and that was something that we had been going back and forth on for over a year. Yeah. A year plus we had been talking about like true. moving in. And it was the break that gave clarity. So yes. even though our break was only two weeks. It counts. It, it, it ca- still counts. It counts. And also it made a it significant helped. change on the relationship. You know, whatever yeah. the title, that, if the title, I believe the title of this podcast episode is probably going to be like how taking a break saved our relationship. Mm. And it's very true. It's not clickbait. I mean, had we not gone on the break, where do you think we would be? We would have broken up for sure. Yeah, we would have broken up, or we would be still. Uh, no, we would have. We definitely would have broken. At some up. point, we would have. We would have yeah. probably just kept treading water. Yeah, and we would have like and not moved gotten, in. We wouldn't have moved in. I don't think. No, you would have moved into your own place. I would have moved into my own place. I would have moved into another place because she hated her apartment. Yeah. And at that point, you're like, yeah. At that point, you're, this question is like, you've been together three years, and now you're moving to your own places, but you're not. I moving mean, people there. live. People in do separate places, so yeah, you that's fair. Say it like that. That's true. That's true. And no shade <laughs> or harm to anyone who has done that, but. There is sort of that question more if likely. If you do want to eventually live with someone, I mean, you should take your time. Take your time and do it. Well, that's the thing, right? That's why we didn't move in together. We wanted to do it when we both felt really comfortable. And I was obviously feeling a little bit more comfortable than Merle, but she never was. She was never sure about it. But it wasn't until the break happened there she was like, I'm ready. And it's really interesting about how how about how the, the break made that happen. So ultimately, I guess our stances on breaks changed because yeah. of this experience, you know? Yeah. I was really scared and I expressed this during therapy about this break being a breakup like my last relationship was. And I remember both Merle and Devin trying to allay my fears and being like, you know, like a break can be really healthy if handled in the right way. Yeah. What are lessons you would tell them? If you're taking a break, what would what are things they should plan to do? Get a couple therapists if you can. But ideally, if you can't, then to 
Make a list of rules with your partner, probably. Make a list of rules, and I'd say also set, like, intentions for what you want yeah, the break to definitely. be. definitely. Oh, Devin had us write letters to each other, remember? Oh, that was really nice. That uh, was basically that. Basically, yeah. Devin had us write, our therapist had us write letters to the other person about what we'd hope for them to accomplish during the break. Yeah. And that was really nice. And we weren't supposed to read them until the, the break, break started. Began. And, man, reading that was what also made me, like... That made me so emotional. That made me, like... uh I was like, Devin, well, are you trying I, to get us to stay together? <laughs> yeah, I, I threw those condoms away. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're drying your tears with condoms. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't need these anymore. Anyways. Uh, so advice would be communication. If you can do a, invest in a couple's therapist, split it with each other. And if you can't afford a therapist, again, you know, there are just communicate. Just make everything as clear as possible yes. what you're hoping to get out of the break yes uh what the parameters are. parameters are like can you sleep with other people can you can not can you reach out to the other person yeah can you talk which you i know? recommend that you can yeah because you, you really want it to be it. as transparent as possible you know like it should a person want to know if you hooked up with someone else yeah yeah all these things just commute in life in general as i've learned there's well is there such a thing as over communication it's better to over communicate than yeah, under I communicate so. i mean also like don't my recommendation was don't do the break anywhere outside of your normal day to day life. Because if you do a break and you like, like I wasn't even in LA, so I didn't even get a sense of being home. I was at my grandpa's and that did influence things a mm. little bit, but like going on a beautiful trip to Greece during your break, you're not getting a real image of what your life is going to be like. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's a really good, that's a good way of looking at it. Although, interestingly, when I was starting, the th when we had the plans for the three months, I was in a different place. I, I would have been in a different place entirely anyways. So, something to think about. And couples therapy, just like regular therapy, there is low cost. Sliding scale. Yeah, there's a sliding scale, you know, like, Merle and I pay 100 bucks. 50 uh, bucks 50 each bucks. for like once a month. Yeah, for, for a session. And I think that's... As an investment in the relationship. Worth th it. I mean, like, genuinely, without that therapy, without the break, we wouldn't be here. And you wouldn't be able to hear and... Or see us. us. Uh, well, you could probably hear or see us wow. on, on individual yeah. podcasts where we're like, yeah, we, we put off putting making a podcast or anything or a channel or anything together because we didn't want to be known as a relationship. We wanted to be known for our own work. And I think honestly, we're at a point now where we are. You know, you have a very successful YouTube channel, and me, I'm pulling back from content creation. Honestly, like my own YouTube channel and stuff, because I'm focusing on filmmaking, on directing exactly, and producing uh, more traditional film as you should. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Um, but uh, yeah, and so at this point, I'm like, I feel comfortable, you know, having this podcast together and just having it as my probably my one for me at least my, one of my only outlets really as far as like online content creation. And so it's kind of nice. nice, and it's also nice that we own this. It's, it's yeah, the two of us. That's huge. Because uh, there was plus. a period where obviously during our time at BuzzFeed when we had videos made of us and about us, we were okay with it. We were happy. We were, like we never, we were, we never felt forced to do it. But at the end of the day, you know, we also, at the time, were like, you know, we can't keep giving so much of ourselves essentially to a company right. uh, of our personal lives. And so that's why we kind of hit the kibosh, kibosh, kibosh. Yeah, kibosh. You just you say yeah to which kibosh. one? Kibosh. Kibosh. <laughs> uh, we put the kibosh on that. But now, you know, it's been <laughs> a few years. Overall, breaks. Thoughts on breaks. Overall, I'm for them as long as you have good communication. And I think people should talk about them more when they take breaks. Yeah, my thoughts as well. In the future, we'll be taking your questions at the end of each episode, um, but we're not there yet, but we will. But if you have questions, you can comment them. Yeah, what she said. This is our first episode, so if things are a little rough around the edges, uh, our apologies. You know, hopefully we can dress up, you know, get a little plant behind Merle Yeah, in the I look like I'm inside of a cell. <laughs> but you sound you great have, because of those sound panels. You have a nice plant behind you. Yeah, well, that's the plant that I've taken care of. Well, you actually, you water I, it now. You're not taking care of anything. <laughs> Ever since we moved in, I he just assumes I'm going to water the plants. I take care of other things because around the, I the, do the, water the house. Plants. She, she's, she, I mean, she is a, a, the plant lady. So um, I clean the bathroom. No, you don't. When? The other day, I put up the nice curtain and everything. That's not cleaning. It's organizing. I clean. Who them. organized the this entire is what, pantry? This is what you can look forward to when you move into your significant other. <laughs> Who organized the pantry? That's all I'm going to say. Who <laughs> takes care of the pets? Both of us. You take oh. you take Lucille to the park a little bit more than me. But who made a delicious pasta meal for you last night? And who made a delicious cabbage cups two nights ago? 
<laughs> they, and they were delicious. Who's making spaghetti alla assassina tonight? tonight? Are you making that tonight? Yes. Wow, that's a real treat. That is a real treat. Oh, that's gonna fuck up my canker sore though. Oh, Shouldn't wow. be kissing strangers. What are you talking about? I already discussed. It's not herpes. It's a different thing. A cold. I'll sore wait to hear from sore, a doctor. A cold sore and a canker sore are different things. They are. Sure. You would have herpes <laughs> if it was herpes. Are you stupid? <laughs> I just have a very strong immune system, so maybe it hasn't transmitted you don't. to me. You I don't. do. You I, I clogged, grew up in Asia. You have a clogged nose twenty four. <laughs> that has nothing to do with my immune system, though. Your immune system's not doing nothing for your nose. But what your if, nose. <laughs> this is this is what Arya sounds like. It breathing all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mouth breather only when my nose is clogged up. It's not clogged Which up. Which is twenty four seven. I'm breathing normally. You do this every time. You go. Can you hear that? And you go. What? I go hear that <laughs> <laughs> everybody can hear that uh wow yeah this that's is what like you the opposite for. of asmr <laughs> hearing somebody's clogged nose it's someone's kink i bet you, I, did, you know. I bet you <laughs> I, bet, I bet it is wherever you're watching this or listening to it leave us your thoughts on breaks in general because that yeah. was the topic of this and episode. if you've been on a break you know maybe normalizing it by sharing yeah. if you're comfortable in the comments yeah please share your experiences because some people might be considering it and they might want to see other examples instead exactly. of a crazy long ass story but hey you know what if anything i'm hoping that people watching this that are considering a break will be like hey it worked out really well for them let's go on that break and i'm hoping it works out well for you too we i mean it working out well doesn't mean that you stay together Exactly. And actually, that's a really important thing to say. There was a study I came across in the research for this, which said that couples that live together, that take a break or separate, only 10% of them reunite is oh, a wow. study I found online. And then even those that do come back together, like we have only 33% of them remain in that relationship as well. Oh. So I think an important lesson here is as well is we don't want to throw up this illusion that like, oh, just take a break. It'll fix your relationship. It'll fix your relationship. And like now Merle and I are going to be together forever. We can't yeah. You can you can you never know what the future will hold. It's just communication and respecting each other's boundaries, really. I mean, yeah. it's not like there is no fix all to any relationship. So if you go on a break and then you guys don't get back together, then that's still a success because you ultimately got the time you needed to make that decision. Well, that'll be it for our first ever episode yes. together. What a treat. What a joy to have had you listening and or watching. Hopefully it's interesting to listen to and watch if you've enjoyed our first episode make sure to subscribe oh wait like. let me do my interpretive dance oh yes 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 if you enjoyed what you saw please make sure to leave a like a comment subscribe if possible wherever you are and if you can leave a review that would be fantastic to hopefully bring more people to the podcast and to this community we want to hopefully continue growing and speaking of community we will have an exclusive private discord for uh, our listeners that are members of our new Patreon, uh, where we will also be dropping ad-free extended episodes, which include basically just m more rambling and chaotic fun with the two of us. So, uh, yeah, we'll be everywhere. Uh, our socials are in the description. But Merle, where are you at? You are at Merle Shea on Instagram and TikTok. And my YouTube channel is just my name. And my socials are basically all at Aria Intavong. Uh, the exact spelling will probably be in the description. Uh, A-R-I-A-I-N-T-H-A-V-O-N-G. Very good. That's and his birthday is August 15th. Yes. And her birthday is October 5th, which is around the time this episode probably has, is coming out. So, again, give her Happy a... Happy birthday to me. Yes. Give Happy her a, a belated birthday, birthday gift me. by liking, commenting, Happy subscribing, uh, leaving a review, and telling your friends about this beautiful couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try to finish that sentence oh, off. No. But it sounds as if like we're like uh That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I just tell them about the podcast. Tell them about the podcast is all I'm saying. Maybe don't anymore. I feel like we ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's cut there. <laughs>